My name is Matthew Wersman and I'd like to begin by thanking Anne for the opportunity to present today. Um, I'm the co-founder of a startup called uh, Kimia and my, oh, my slides won't work yet, uh, which is based in the CSIRO's Linfield Collaboration Hub here in Sydney. We're a team of engineers and scientists who set out to change the way disease diagnostics was delivered. Today, I would like to share a little bit about Kimia's journey to date, how COVID impacted us and led to some fantastic support from HQ, and my views of where diagnostics is heading. Now, since its inception, Kimia has been fortunate enough to have interacted with a number of excellent nodes at AMP. When I submitted an application, I thought it would be a good forum to show Gabe how AMP engages with a local technology company like mine from the industry user's perspective. So as such, today I won't be focusing uh, on the technical aspects so much, but more the product development. And I hope it will be of use to AMP staff watching by showing how your organisation can make a real difference to mine. Now, as touched on by the previous talker, accurate rapid diagnostics can save lives. Kimia was founded on the principle of making accurate nucleic acid testing for disease diagnostics both more affordable, more accessible, and more user interaction centric. Our objective was a device that would automatically analyze a liquid sample for a panel of DNA and RNA markers linked to diseases, which makes nucleic acid tests truly portable a point of care model for healthcare becomes feasible. Now the concept behind point of care is that the test can be performed wherever the patient is, hospital, local clinic, or at home. The core paradigm of Kimia's technology is microfluidics. Now microfluidics, as some of you are aware, is probably the manipulation and analysis of small volumes of fluid. But typically commercially available microfluidics tends to be associated with plastic only devices inserted into some forms of benchtop analysis systems. What we wanted to do at Kimia was use the many advantages of microfluidics, but move beyond plastic to silicon chip based technology to couple the life sciences domain with manufacturing processes that powered the VLSI industry. These processes, as many of you are aware, are, are available at AMP and are keys to a high volume mass production, increasing functionality per unit area and cost reductions through miniaturization. Now, by packaging uh, functional power into a smaller form factor, our aim was a diagnostic device that was not only rapid and cost effective, but importantly and crucially, can extract data for the clinical workflows. But much of, and this is important, much of Kimia's journey as a startup has been learning about how these traits need to interact with the customer and the patient. The more stakeholders we talk to, the more we learned about the differences in needs depending on test location, disease, patient outcome, misdiagnosis, and so on. And I'd like to emphasize, Kimia is not a research project. We are a startup and we have the objective of a product in mind. So on one side, you've got all of these external inputs around patients and regulations. And on the other side, there's all the company inputs that come in. And technology, while it's very important, is only a small part of the process which brings me to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we dial back 18 months, Kimmy is working away in its lab, proof of concept around E. coli. At that time, a tool for a pandemic response wasn't foremost on our mind, even though our technology was well suited for it. And the reason was simple, pre-COVID-19, there was just no business model. In fact, this is a report released by the World Health Organization about nine months before COVID, lamenting the lack of diagnostic capabilities. But I can tell you from personal experience, it's a very short conversation with a potential investor if you say you're basing your company on a one in 100 year pandemic. So that's when I received a call from Matthew Borland at AMP UNSW, offering support to projects focused on the COVID-19 response. That support had um, twofold objective. One, allow Kimia to focus its technology on the diagnostics of SARS-CoV-2 and also allow a company to build a longer term sovereign capability that might benefit the nation in the future. We were and we remain extremely grateful for that support because it allowed us as a startup and a self-funded one at that to make some meaningful steps forward. So how does Kimia uh, intend on tackling different diseases? Well, it begins with a platform technology grounded in silicon, 
upon a wafer, as many of you are aware, of multiple microfluidic chips that can be the same or different designs. Each microfluidic chip is biochemically pro programmed with a panel of single nucleic stranded uh, acid probes that identify the disease. Each chip is to be packaged into a system designed to get the sample from the patient to the chip. And along that journey, sample is processed, nucleic acids are amplified. If the amplified target um, matches the complementary probes on the chip, then under an applied potential, light is emitted and detected. This is an example of the microfluidic chips that were developed at the AMP UNSW under the COVID-19 support package. A special shout out to Dr. Andrew C for his outstanding work because anyone that knows multi-layer microfluidics requires complex process development where what happens at the first layer can be uh, impact what happens at the final layer. So what, not only was I asking Andrew to develop a process, but he was to pay attention to aspects like yield because a, a process that delivers a single chip at the center of the wafer but loses everything at the periphery is not a process suitable for scaling into production. We took these chips and inserted them into Kimia's own specially designed PCB system and were able to achieve a fundamental result by detecting a 15 nucleotide synthetic sequence. Now I emphasize much work remains to be done. We have to integrate the amplification, the detection, develop the fluidics and do this with respect to SARS-CoV-2. But AMP support allowed us to hit some really meaningful milestones and the blue waves form you see on the uh, laptop there was our first real nucleotide sequence detection of our chip. But there's another dimension to AMP that from an industry user perspective, I'm really passionate about and I think is of equal importance to the technical side and I'd really like to emphasize today. While you can get processes and equipment at AMP that you couldn't normally get down at a place like Bunnings, there's a professional team and a network there that allows you um, to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. So for example, we hit a roadblock. We reached out to Ben Johnson at AMPS Macquarie University and we achieved a laser-based workaround. Matthew Vaughan and I uh, collaborated closely on a New South Wales Health COVID-19 grant application. And in doing so, we assembled a commercialization and medical team of experts that really helped evaluate the project. We stress tested the design, we stress tested the business case, and today we have opportunities like this to raise our profile as a startup. So really what I wanna emphasize, what I wanna get across in this talk is that from a user's perspective, AMP is more than just a clean room and machines. It's people, it's expertise, and it's also a leg up to a startup like mine. I'd like to finish by touching upon some aspects of diagnostics. Now, a few years ago, Deloitte published a report end identifying 10 areas of innovation that would change healthcare. One of these was point of care diagnostics. However, what I think is really important here is that these dimensions are not mutually exclusive. In fact, to strengthen the linkage between them, some areas uh, uh, that are silicon chip based sample to answer platform is essential to delivering things like pa patient experience, test compliance, data tracking, and ease of use. What COVID-19 did was accelerate the acceptance and the adoption of these innovations. So in the coming way, uh, months and years, this is why I think, believe you're going to see a wave of innovation where we move beyond simple pregnancy tests to smart tests. In fact, antigen-based lateral flow systems now are hitting the market with embedded PCB tech. New markets such as at-home testing, enabled by automation which integrates with telehealth, as well as moving beyond infectious diseases to test our other health and wellness markers. Where the challenges really lay for a company like Kimi or anyone else working in this sector is, is an on-the-spot test result necessary? What can be done with that result? Is that test appropriately uh, priced, particularly where the burden of the price falls on the patient? And then finally, and just as importantly, does it interrupt the clinical workflow? Because if it doesn't, then it's not going to be accepted and integrated into the wider system. So on that note, thank you, Ant, for the opportunity to present today. And I hope it gives you an industry user perspective that you might not normally see. Thank you. Sorry.
I'll start again. <laughs> Sorry, I was just saying. Uh, thank you very much, Matthew, for sharing your insights with us. I think that um, one of the things that I noticed when I first came on board is not only was AMP an amazing place when it came to accessing assets, but it is the team that sits around it and who provides deep insights uh, into helping people such as yourself do amazing things as well too. Um, I have a quick question, which I'm delighted to say. Um, James asks, what does the name Kimir actually mean? Uh, thank you. It, um, it, it basically comes from chemistry and, uh, and has root calls in things like alchemy and those types of things. Not that I'm equating chimia with alchemy, but that's the, the, the root of the language. I think in your own way, you're certainly uh, creating something that's gold. So I think that you, you have a lot to offer. 